Hi, and welcome to another edition of Inside Windows Phone. I'm Larry Lieberman, your host. Today we're talking to Steve Bell. Around here at Microsoft, Steve Bell is known as the guy that you go talk to if you have any questions about the certification process for applications for Windows Phone. Steve, um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Yeah, I've been at uh, Microsoft for a while, and Larry and I have uh, worked together in a number of different roles. Very glad to be here. I'm the operations program manager who manages application certification for Windows Phone, and been in that role for several years now. That's great. So you've been working on the certification for Windows Phone apps since the beginning of Windows Phone 7, right? Yeah, so since then, and actually uh, reaching back to 6.5. Wow. So it's been a while. So what is the point of certification, and, and, and how does it work? What do you do during the certification process? Yeah, so in looking at certification, what the main goal is, is to provide a consistent application experience for end users. And to do that, we have a series of technical requirements as well as content policy requirements that each application needs to meet before it can be published in the marketplace. So it's all about getting end users high quality apps. Exactly. So the, the requirements, there's technical requirements and then there's policy requirements. Is that the two buckets mostly? That's right. That's the two main buckets. Okay. Uh, and then you also validate people too when they register, right? We do, and so in looking at the overall process, the first phase that a developer will go through is actually registering on the App Hub site at create.msdn.com. That's right. What's that site again? That would be create.msdn.com. Okay. Uh, so in going through that registration, we've recently streamlined the process for individual developers primarily. So as an individual developer, when you go through the site, you'll provide your method of payment your credit card information, for example, and we'll actually pivot off that credit card information in order to validate you. And so in most cases, we can actually complete identification of a developer in less than one business day. Wow, that's, that's a really big improvement. I, I know it took a few more days when we started out um, to validate people, and sometimes people were a little anxious about that. But it's important we know who you are, that you are who you say you are. Yeah, and it's really there for the protection of the developers so that someone doesn't steal your identity effectively in the right. marketplace. Um, so um, once I've authenticated then, then I can actually go unlock my phone to develop on, right? That's right. And, and that's, that's huge, is being able to actually deploy your application to device so that you can actually test your application throughout the development cycle. On a real device, because that's real device. really important to test on a real device. Otherwise, you don't know how it's actually going to run. Uh, the other thing, though, that we did this time is that for registered developers in Marketplace, we provided them early access to retail images uh, for their commercial phones of Mango early on. And so that was a huge benefit that we did this time. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. Yeah. I mean, to uh, give developers the ability to actually have the retail images that end users will be using before they're commercially available. Yeah, that was, was quite a, I, I know a tremendous amount of work went into making that happen. And, uh, but, but, you know, we're all about the developer, and we want to make sure that you have everything you need to write great apps and games for Windows Phone. So, you know, that's, we knew we had to make that happen this time. Yeah, which was huge. So, um, that's a little bit about the, the, the registration. Uh, and then when someone goes to submit an application, it goes through about this testing for the content and the policy um, what, and the technical requirements. What kind of technical requirements are we looking at? So the technical requirements and content policy requirements are all listed at create.msdn.com. Right. And in looking at those requirements, it's... A we'll have a link on this post, too, directly to the certification requirements. Fantastic. And so in looking at those overall requirements, definitely it's a required reading uh, for developers because we make sure that each application that is tested adheres to each of those requirements. Right. And so the document itself is in HTML format on MSDN. Right. And it's a total of about 20 web pages, so fairly... A lot of stuff there. Yeah, a lot, lot of stuff, but it's something that you could easily go through and grok within a matter of probably half a day. Can you give us some examples of some of the technical requirements that we have, just you know, to give us a flavor of what they're like? Sure. So, uh, in particular, what we can do is focus on the top five requirements, which 
If any other requirements that you're looking at, these are the top five you need to make sure that your application meets. Are they the five that people are hitting more than other things, or are they the top five most important in your mind? Just Yeah, good point. So these are actually uh, the top five requirements that most likely applications fail to meet. Okay. Uh, so in looking at what those are, is 5.1.2, which is application closure. or Chapter and verse. Yeah, So exactly. you're able to quote this thing pretty well, I bet. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's uh, been a while uh, having some quality time with our um, certification requirements. But uh, so, so looking at 5.1.2, application closer, it, it's all about the application not unexpectedly terminating. Okay, like or, crashing. Yeah, like crashing. Okay. And so in the event that the application... It's good not to have your application crash. <laughs> Exactly. I'm just reiterating these points. And then uh, if an application does happen to crash, then it recovers gracefully and the end user is still able to interact with the application. And in fact, you know, as a developer, you can put mechanisms in your app to actually get that crash dump data, if you, depending on how you're handling it in your application. You can get that data back to you, uh, either by prompting the user to send an email or um, that's probably the most prominent me mechanism I know some folks are doing. Yeah, exactly. And actually, when you go to your App Hub, you'll be able to see the crash analysis for your application. That's fantastic. Now, that's a pretty recent improvement, isn't it? It is. It, it, it's recent, and it's an awesome service for developers so that you can get real-time data on how well your application is performing with end-user devices. Wow. So uh, you were talking about these top five things again. Yes. So next topic. Uh, is 5.5.2, which is content and themes. So the main takeaway here is to make sure that you test your application in both the light and dark theme. That's right. That's right. We, because we let users completely customize their device. They can see it in black or white. And then, so when it's white, though, the thing is, is that if developers don't think about the fact that the background might be white, they might choose colors that don't necessarily show up very good against white, like white. It uh, doesn't always look up that good against white, and exactly. hen hence a bad experience for the user. Yeah, and, that, and that's actually our second most common failure that we're seeing. Really? Yeah, yeah because people don't realize you can set the phone to white. Exactly. Uh, so the third topic is 5.2.4, which is back button. Okay. And so the back button requirements are actually broken down into four sub-requirements. So in the interest of time, we don't have just enough time to go through each one of those sub-requirements sure. specifically. But I encourage all developers to go through those requirements and make sure that their applications subscribe to the back button behavior that's required. Okay. I know that there's been some controversy and confusion around the back button. Uh, there, there, there is, and uh, that, that's very fair. And uh, one thing that we've done is when we updated our certification requirements about three weeks ago, we went through and clarified the back button requirements so that they should be much easier to interpret mm -hmm. and much easier to follow. And in Windows Phone Mango, we actually have APIs now that give you a much more granular level of control over the navigation stack. And so in Silverlight, uh, the Silverlight page model, uh, you can now actually go in and delete from the, the back stack uh, yourself affirmatively if you if a page that's in the back stack doesn't necessarily need to be there but you have to look at these requirements and follow them carefully that's right uh, is there another one you were gonna and there's just two more okay. so the next is 5.5.1 language validation okay so when you look at the now 20 languages that we support for applications we're seeing more and more developers take advantage of these additional languages beyond, beyond eFigs, which we previously supported. And what does eFigs stand for? Uh, so eFigs is English, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. Got it. So now we support a total amount of 20 languages, which is just awesome. Wow, and 15 more. 15 more. And, and when you look at it, developers are definitely taking advantage of this additional language support that we offer. One thing that we are seeing, though, is that there's an increasing number of applications where the application description, which is entered in during the submission process, that that description is not localized to the target language. Ah. So just make sure that for each targeted language of the application, that that localized description is appropriate for that language. In, in the correct language. Is in what the you're correct saying. language. Yeah. Okay. 
Great, good to know. I, you know, we're very excited about all these new languages. We want to make sure that people know that um, you know you're able to target these new countries with these new languages. Uh, if you have an existing application in the marketplace that you've, uh, this is another thing to note. If you have an existing application in the marketplace that you've published uh, globally, worldwide, uh, you actually do have to go back in the marketplace to pick the new markets, I believe. Is that correct? That's right. You do have to go in and select those additional markets. Because even if you said worldwide before, those, we didn't have as many markets. And so now we have more markets. And we're asking you to affirmatively go back in marketplace and select worldwide again, I think, will do it right. Or Yeah, and, and definitely um, developers should do that mm -hmm. to, to help encourage your global reach for your application. Right, right. And there was one more. And the last one is 5.5.5, which is the application running on multiple devices. So we talked before about the value of testing an application on an actual device. It's uh, beneficial to test the application on multiple devices if possible. If not, we'll do it for you. Uh, but also to, to ensure that for 7.0 applications, that you test those 7.0 applications on Mango devices as well at some point as they become available. Because since 7.0 applications are available in the marketplace to end users with Mango or 7.5 devices, we'll be testing applications on Mango devices to make sure that they, uh, we'll test right. 7.0 applications on Mango devices sure. to make sure that they run and provide that predictable experience and with the quality that we expect. We do, of course, want everyone to update their applications to Mango, though. So We do. Yeah, what happens when I submit, so if I have an existing application and I go submit a new uh, update f to uh, bring that application to Mango, what happens uh, in the, I mean, for end users? What do they see? Yeah, so what we see is we, we worked hard to make sure that we were doing the right thing for developers as well as the right thing for end users. And so what that encompasses is you'll have your 7.0 GA or Noto application, which is published, and that will remain published in the marketplace. Uh, then when you update that application to Mango or 7.5, what will happen is Mango users will see the 7.5 application. Okay. The they Nodo, won't see the old version. They won't see the old They'll version. They'll only see the new 7.5 application. Yes. And so for users who have 7.0 or Nodo devices, they'll continue to see the respective 7.0 or Nodo application that's published. That's, that's great, because then it makes sense, right? If I'm on you know, 7.0, I don't want to see the Mango applications because they won't run. I only want to see the applications that run on my device. And if I'm on Mango and 7.5, I only want to see the new versions. So it tends to make sense how, we, how we did this. Yeah. That's great. So what's changing for Mango about the certification process? Are there big changes in store? So we, we spend a lot of time to minimize the amount of churn mm -hmm. for the application certification requirements because we wanted to have the least amount of impact on developers while at the same time we're balancing out maintaining application quality. So in the end, there, there's actually less than seven changes wow. for Mango to the certification requirements. And most of those requirements are specific to if your application takes advantage of new capabilities in Mango. OK. Great. Great. So um, you know, what kind of metrics do we provide developers in the App Hub? Do you know, like, in terms of, do I get to see how many people? I obviously can see how much money I'm making, but there's other stuff in there too, right? Yeah, there's, there, there's lots of detailed reports that we provide in the App Hub from the crash data that we talked about before mm -hmm. to also just the sheer number of downloads. Right. Cool. Well, that's exciting. I mean, how, many, how long does it take to get through the certification process right now? Yeah, so we're, we're tracking to five business days or less. Okay. In, in most cases, we're able to deliver in the or less portion. OK. Um, and if someone fails, they get very explicit information about why they failed? They do. So a developer whose application fails, that developer will receive a detailed test summary report, which will outline which test cases specifically failed. Mm -hmm. uh, where it's appropriate, there will also be tester notes that provide additional information as to 
how that error was found and how to address that error in some cases. That's fantastic. And it actually reminds me of one other thing I want to make sure people are aware of. In the new uh, Mango tools, the new Mango SDK, uh, there is what we call the Marketplace Test Kit. Mm -hmm. And this will actually allow you to run uh, your application through uh, a very similar set of tests that we run in the certification process uh, before you submit it. That's right. And so it's designed as really a checklist okay. that you can go through during your application development cycle, with the theory being that you can actually develop your application to meet certification requirements as opposed to submitting the application, rolling the dice, and seeing what happens. Right, yeah, and it's very easy to find too. All you have to do is right click on the project and you'll get, and for 7.5 projects, you'll see a uh, context menu item for Marketplace Test Kit. And that will bring up a new uh, properties page that will actually walk you through the steps of performing these tests. So it's, it's actually a tremendous uh, accelerator to um, your processes and, and should really make certification much easier for a wide majority of people. Yeah, and, and that's the goal, is for us to really help developers have their applications pass certification the first time around. Right. And so, um, what you know, do different types of apps generally get uh, any specific types of errors hit specific type of apps more than others? Are there? Uh, in, in some cases, I mean, in, in looking at the top failures that we discussed, when you look at, say, like a uh, complex app, say, like a game that has multiple levels. Sure, like an XNA game. Uh, exactly. Uh, what we see is that for those applications, typically there's back button issues that, that occur uh, when you have, say, like a multi-layered game, multi-leveled game right. that's submitted for the first time. So that's one of the most common failures for that type of application. Okay. Uh, anything else about the certification process? So, uh, overall, uh, we continue to improve the process itself mm -hmm. and would love to have developer feedback on what can be changed and what's working and what's not working. So there's two, two different ways that developers can provide feedback. Uh, one is by going to the App Hub and selecting contact support and then essentially creating a support ticket and, and that's if they're having a real problem, really. Right? Uh, well, if they're having a real problem, but it's also a way that feedback can be entered for, say, the certification requirements or okay. for the App Hub itself. And then another avenue is also going to the developer forums on MSDN, which are also accessible via create.msdn.com and providing feedback there. That's great. That's great. Uh, well, thanks for your time today. Steve, before we end, I just want to ask you, what's your favorite application? So my, my favorite application to date uh, has to be Angry Birds. Okay, that's, that's a very popular favorite application today. It is, and uh, you know, overall, uh, had a great time talking with you today. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to the developers becoming part of our 50,000 registered developers in the marketplace and submitting applications as we close in on the 30,000 published applications. We're almost at 30,000. Almost there. That's fantastic. We'll put lots more information about the certification process and, and what it means to you on this page. Um, thanks for listening. Thank you.